In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find the greatest common factor. So let's say if we have two numbers, 15 and 35, what is the greatest common factor between these two numbers? Here's the one method that you can use. First, write the prime factorization of each number. The prime factorization of 15 is simply 3 times 5. You want to break down 15 into prime numbers that multiply to 15. 35 is a composite number, and it can be broken down into 7 times 5. Now, once you have the prime factorization of each number, notice the common prime numbers that are present. So 5 goes into 15 and 35. So 5 is a factor of 15 and 35. It's a common factor because it's found in both numbers, and it's the greatest of all the common factors. So it's called the GCF, the greatest common factor. So the GCF of 15 and 35 is 5. Now let's try another example for the sake of practice. What is the greatest common factor of 21 and 28? So let's write out the factors of 21. 21 is 3 times 7. So that's the prime factorization of 21. 28 is 4 times 7. And 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. So this is the prime factorization of 28. Notice that 7 is a common factor between 21 and 28. In fact, it's the greatest common factor. So that's the GCF between 21 and 28. The answer is 7. Now, let's work on another example, 22 and 55. Go ahead and pause the video. Find the GCF, the greatest common factor between these two numbers. 22 is 2 times 11. 55 is 5 times 11. The GCF is 11. Find the GCF between 12 and 16. So take a minute, pause the video, and work on that example. So 12 is 4 times 3. And 4 is a composite number, which we can break down into 2 times 2. So that's the prime factorization of 12. And for 16, which is 4 times 4, 4 can be broken up into 2 times 2. And the other 4 is 2 times 2 as well. So it takes 4 twos to get to 16. Now that we've written the prime factorization of 12 and 16, we can identify the greatest common factor. So the first number have two twos. The last one also have two twos. So the greatest common factor is 2 times 2, which is 4. Those numbers are common to 12 and 16. Do the same thing for 15 and 18. Write the prime factorization and then identify the GCF. So 15 is simply 3 times 5. We can't break it down any further than that. 18 is 6 times 3. And 6 is 3 times 2. And then we still have the other 3. So 3 is the only common factor in 18 and 15. It's the greatest common factor. And so that's the GCF. The answer is 3. Now what about 24 and 40? Find the GCF between the two numbers. So 24 is 4 times 6. And 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 3 times 2. So that's the prime factorization of 24. 40 is 8 times 5. And 8 is basically 2 times 2 times 2. So 24 has 3 2's. And 40 has 3 2's as well. So you want to identify the prime numbers that are the same in both lists. So 24 and 40 both contain three twos. 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. So 8 is the GCF in this problem. And you could check it. 40, if you divide 40 by 8, you get 5. 24 divided by 8, you get 3. So the GCF is going to be divisible 24 and 40 it has to be divisible both by the GCF 8. Sometimes you may need to find the GCF between two monomials. So sometimes variables will be involved. 
What is the greatest common factor between 6x and 9x squared? Well, the process is the same. We need to write the prime factorization of 6x. 6 is 3 times 2, and then we have an x. 9x squared, we can break down 9 into 3 times 3, and x squared is x times x. So both lists contains at least one 3 and an x. So therefore, the GCF between 6x and 9x squared is 3 times x, which is just 3x. Now what about this one? 12xy and 15x squared y cubed. Find the GCF between these two monomials. So let's start with 12xy. 12 is 3 times 4, and 4 we can write it as 2 times 2. And then we have 1x and 1y. 15x squared y cubed. 15 is 3 times 5. And x squared is x times x. Y cubed is y times y times y. So let's identify what's common in both lists. We have a 3. There's at least one x. And a single y. And that's all that we can find that's common to the two lists that we have. So the GCF, the greatest common factor, is 3xy. Try this one, 24x squared y cubed and 30x cubed y to the fourth. Twenty-four is four times six, and four is two times two. Six is two times three. And then we have x squared, which is x times x, and y cubed, which is y times y times y. Thirty is five times six, and six is two times three. And let's not forget the five. So thirty is two times three times five. X cubed is x times x times x. Y to the fourth is y times y times y four times. So 2 is common to both lists. And we have a 3 as well. And then there is uh, two x variables that can be found in both. And three y variables. So the GCF is going to contain a 2, a 3, two x variables, and three y variables. So 2 times 3 is 6, x times x is x squared, 3 y's represent y cubed. So this is the greatest common factor uh, between these two monomials. Now what about finding the GCF between three numbers? Let's say 12, 18, and 20. Now the process is the same, it's simply longer. The prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, and 18 that's 3 times 6, and 6 is 3 times 2. But let me write it in ascending order. So the prime factorization of 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. And for 20, it's 4 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. Now once you have the prime factorization of all three numbers, identify what's common to it. So each number contains at least 1, 2. And... Not every number has a 3 or a 5, but all numbers do contain at least 1, 2. So therefore, 2 is the GCF between 12, 18, and 20. Now, what about between 30, 48, and 56? What is the greatest common factor between those three numbers? So 30 is 5 times 6, or 6 times 5, and 6 is 2 times 3. So that's the prime factorization of 30. The prime factorization of 48 is it's 2 times 24, and 24 is 2 times 12, and 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So that's the prime factorization of 48. And 56 is 2 times 28, 28 is 2 times 14, 14 is 2 times 7. Now, let's find out what's common to everything. All three numbers contain at least one 2. Not all of them 
contain a 3. 56 doesn't have a 3 involved, and not all of them contain a 5 or a 7. So once again, the GCF is simply 2.